Good morning, this is Dr. J. Dunn, and I wanted to record a little how-to video on how to work with the Methylation Interactive Program. There are so many new features and fun things going on with this program, and I wanted to just kind of point some things out to you so you get the most um, out of your program. I created this because I wanted to really know and understand every piece of this pathway. So. Uh, as you'll notice, if you click on any of the words, it'll give you a little definition of what exactly it is. So it's just as little reminders there. So every word on here has been defined and its relationship to the uh, methylation interactive pathways. So it's designed to really complement our courses that we teach around the country on methylation. These pathways are cellular biochemical pathways that happen at all times of the day and night in the body. Um, and just as a reminder, the purple balloons are areas where you could have genetic variants that will impair your ability to perform, your cell's ability to perform those functions at a normal level. So if you have genetic variants in any of those genes along the way, that pathway is going to be a little more sluggish in the body. So as you remember, uh, the methylation pathways involved in detoxification, DNA and RNA repair, making neurotransmitters, making nitric oxide and breaking it down, re regulating inflammation, making energy out of our food, uh, controlling histamine levels, and so much more. So a lot of things happening here at the cellular level. So uh, again, I created this little chart for you to learn, really learn these pathways and see what's going on. So once you get your DNA report, your raw data, then you'll know whether or not you have a genetic variant in a particular area around this pathway. So let's say, for instance, that you have the MTHFR variant that shows up on your genetic report. You can go up here and just click on MTHFR and it'll open a little screen and it'll tell you what that enzyme does. It'll show you the symptoms that are involved when you have a genetic variant or possible health conditions that may be associated with it. And then, you know, as kinesiologists, we want to be able to determine whether or not that gene is acting correctly. And we do that by putting the folic acid vial out of our test kit on the body. If it goes weak, then you know you probably have a sluggish enzyme there. And these are the nutrients we would normally use to balance it. This is generic, so we know that we need an active form of folic acid, and that's right there. Um, also, a complementary molecule would be a methyl B12 or a hydroxy B12 riboflavin or some sort of active B complex. This is the Nutra West conversion chart. It shows you which remedies we would use. Uh, and you can test these kinesiologically to determine which nutrient would be best for your patient that has an MTHFR variant. So you can go up here and close the window there. Um, you'll notice some red boxes throughout the chart. If you click on any of these, it'll give you more information about that topic. So for instance, if you want a reminder about the kidneys and what all they do in the body, you can click on that and it'll show you a little review of your renin, angiotensin, aldosterone system. And then if you go back up here, you can go right back to the chart by clicking on that. Back to the chart button. So several uh, red boxes, there's a liver detox box there. So a quick review of phase one, phase two detox pathways. And we'll go back to the chart. There's the vitamin D pathway. Vitamin D is such a complicated molecule. And again, whenever you see any kind of purple balloon, this is a possible area of genetic variance uh, that can impair your ability to make and break down and use vitamin D. Going back to the chart, uh, these numbers, if you'll recall, if you've taken the class, you'll know that uh, these numbers are what we call the order of clearing. It, when you begin to work with patients and you've examined their genetic report, 
you'll definitely want to start in a particular order to get them balanced. It's incredibly important and we discuss that in great detail in the classes. But here's our number one, our number two, our number three, four, five, etc. So you'll be following that order when you begin to balance the body. Down here in the bottom, here's a review of the instructions on how to use this chart. And down uh, above it, there's the SNP order of clearing. And it tells you, you know, a little bit about the reasons why we clear things in this particular order. And above it, this is a brand new feature for those of you who have been using the chart. Uh, we've put in a little cross-reference. So if you've been using the challenge kit and let's say you have acetyl-CoA that goes weak on the challenge kit and you can't remember what, where does that acetyl-CoA go in the chart. This will remind you here this is an ACAT variant that we're looking at primarily. It could be an MMAB, MUT, or an NDUF variant but most of the time you're going to see that that indicates that there's an, a variant in the ACAT enzyme. And if you're like, I can't remember where that is in the chart, you can click here and it'll show you right where that is. So there's the acetyl-CoA. And to go back to that chart, you come back down here at the bottom to the checklist. Uh, these numbers on the left here indicate the order of clearing. So once you've done your challenge vials and you've laid them out, you can kind of cross-reference here as to where number one is. We're going to start with number one, which is the NADH. If that was weak on your patient, that indicates an NDUF variant. And if you can't remember, where is that NADH? Um, I guess I messed that one up. I'll have to go back and fix that one. Um, you should be able to click on all of those and it'll take you right to where it is on your chart. So that's a handy new feature that we've just added. The danger zones, there are four of them. One, two, three, four. Once you begin working with your patients and you begin the methylation process, uh, these are areas where you can have pressure kind of build up basically and you want to make sure that these areas are balanced. Let's start with this one over here. This is when levels of ammonia begin to rise. This can indicate too much pressures are being applied to um, the methylation pathway in the presence of another block is causing too much pressure. We check that danger zone by checking the ammonia vial. This danger zone down here is the glutamate area. High levels of glutamate can cause serious damage to the central nervous system. This one is the peroxynitrite area or the inflammation pathways. Uh, so whenever you click on any of these it'll tell you exactly why we consider them a danger zone and how you make sure that you haven't pushed into uh, any of these areas when you begin the methylation process. As we discussed in class, you can push a little too hard and it can create some side effects and we want to avoid those. So even after you get everything in place and you think the whole thing is balanced, make sure you go back and check those danger zones and make sure that you're not making more ammonia than the body can get rid of or more glutamate than the body can get rid of or more um, of these reactive oxygen species or quinolinic acid, kinuric acid. Uh, so those are particular areas that you want to pay a lot of attention to. If you notice up here we have 53 pages in the interactive program. It's grown a little bit. I'm adding some things in, um, not only that that little interactive chart there, but um, I put back in the tester definitions. So if you're wanting to know, you know, kind of in, a, in on paper basically, what the methylation tester definitions are. <coughs> you can go to this page and it's acetyl-CoA. It says its main function is to convey the carbon atoms within the acetyl group. So um, it'll give you definitions of each of the testers that are in your methylation test kit. Uh, so let me know if those are helpful for you. Some people like it in this way. Other people like it just the balloons to click on. So I gave you a couple choices here. 
uh, and again, give me feedback on that as to whether or not you like having these in there. On page 20, here's your SNP order of clearing. These charts, uh, this particular chart is from Chris Astle Smith, and he's given me permission to put these in here. And these are, you know, some of the neurotransmitter breakdowns like the tyrosine pathway, tryptophan pathway, histidine pathways, uh, and their cofactors. Nice little study guide there to understand those pathways a little bit better. And I did put in, you know, some of the genetic variants here as well, uh, just as a reminder where they fit in these pathways. There's the PEMPT chart. There's your liver detox pathways again, page 23. Histamine pathways. And this is, again, this is a Chris Astle Smith chart. Uh, I love this chart. It has to do with the Krebs cycle and energy breakdown from glucose to um, ATP. So it's a nice little study guide if you want to go in deeper into the Krebs cycle. Here's your kidney chart again. And this is the microglial activation chart. Glucose, a little more information on the glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase uh, genetic variant. Here is your pentose phosphate pathway on page 30. And this is the uh, cholesterol production pathway. Here's that HMG CoA reductase, and that's your that is blocked when you take a statin. So you can kind of get an idea of what's happening in the body when we block that pathway. A little information on oxalates on page 32. Here's your reactive oxygen species pathway showing oxidative damage to DNA protein and lipids. Uh, and again, an oxidative stress diagram. I love this little chart. This is your vitamin D pathway. You can see how complicated it is when our body makes vitamin D from cholesterol and the things that can kind of go wrong along the way there. Uh, these are the trace amines and catecholamine pathways. You know, lots of lots of geek out material here. This is a nice little article on heavy metal toxicity and the methylation pathways, how heavy metals affect methylation. And 40. So on page 41, this is hormone breakdown pathways. It's a really interesting par uh, chart on how the estrogens in particular are broken down by genetic variants. And, and in this case, the genetic variants are here in these little kind of kind of gray uh, balloons. And this is the vitamin, vitamin B12 production and breakdown pathway that's on page 42. And then we get into the FHE vowel. The, I put these in here for you to use temporarily um, until we get the FHE vowel program going. You can actually print these out, use this as a worksheet to record your patient's genetic variants and whether they have a homozygous, a heterozygous, or a, a normal variant there. So I think these will disappear once we get the FHE vowel program going. The FHE, pro, uh, FHE vowel program will be awesome. You'll be able to f import data from 23andMe and Ancestry DNA uh, into the program and it'll print out this report for you and it'll show you, you know, whether this person has a salt, this particular salt enzyme has a homozygous variant there. Just a reminder of the category that it falls in and that's detox category. And uh, this, the challenge, the kinesiological challenge to see if that enzyme is actually being impaired is over here. And then you just follow the chart to get to your remedies that you want to use to balance that. Super excited about the introduction of that. So that's 53 pages there on your interactive program. Oh, let's go back to the beginning. Okay, so over here on the left we have four genetic variants that don't really fall into the pathway. And you're going to see more of these show up as we discover that, um, you know, there are some genetic variants that are very much impact nutrition levels in the body. And that's, those are the ones that we're really kind of concentrating on. So uh, pretty soon you'll see a new one in here, the adiponectin one, which affects uh, weight and obesity levels. 
and we found ways, inroads into working with those nutritionally. So this this category over here is, is going to begin to grow, and it, it, maybe it'll it'll become another whole page that doesn't quite fit into our biochemical pathways in the same way that we've been working with uh, this methylation and tetrahydrobiopterin and nitric oxide and Krebs cycle pathways. So once you've bought this program, you get free updates. So stay tuned because I'm always thinking of ways that we can do this better. And I love your feedback. Join us on Facebook page, the Holistic Methylation Practitioner page on Facebook. It's a great way to interact with the other practitioners and to get the updates about what's happening in the field and new articles, um, case studies. I've really been enjoying the, the feedback I'm getting from doctors out in the field and the questions we've been getting and the, you know, the, the feedback from other doctors just contributing their information. It's, it's a wonderful place to be um, contributing and, and connecting with other practitioners in the field. Alrighty, hope to see you soon at some of the seminars around the country. If you go to that to that Facebook page or to our website, holisticmethylation.com, you can see our schedule for 2018. We're all over the place. Hope to see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.